Definitely am favoring Oliveira quite heavily myself going into this, but man, if Nice isn't the kind of guy that can trick and prepare for someone, then I don't know who is. 100% Wardy down here in the bottom right side, the blue tower player. He is usually the favorite in the region, but he's had a rough season so far. It's Oliveira. Top left hand side, our red Protoss is going to be nice. And as you said, stumbling through some PvP, it's been close, it's been challenging for him. Uh, PvT is a difficult beast, uh, especially when you're playing Oliveira. Now, Nice is on a 10 loss streak spanning from 2021 to late 2023 against Oliveira. And uh, overall is like five wins, 19 losses or something like that in series. So it's not a good historical win record. That being said, Oliveira lost to Lem and Oliveira lost to uh, someone else as well in the Swiss stage. Can't quite remember who was just off the top of my head, but in general, he struggled more, right? And Nice also looked pretty clutch in some of his comebacks. That being said, he had to make comebacks in a lot of his series. So it's it's not uh, a match where he's favored, but we'll see what he brings out. And I think all eyes are on, you know, the special tactics of Nice. We don't expect him to play particularly normal. Then again, Oliveira is much like Coffee in that he does favor a lot of timing attacks. He's not quite as committed to as many of them as, as Coffee is, right? Oliveira can kind of play a bit deeper into the mid game and still look a bit more well-rounded, but he's, he's definitely got that instinct and habit of pulling the boys or just stimming in on top if he thinks the Protoss is a little under-defended. Now, Oliveira actually lost an Anami, so he's uh, definitely not had the prettiest uh, bit of TVP throughout the uh, course of this past, um, past set of group stage, but he has picked it up again a lot in the playoffs so far, so obviously expecting and hoping that that will continue. As the Cybercore is about to finish here on the side of Nice, the Nexus is halfway done, and there's Reaper just going to pop out of the racks and is going to start moving up to the top of the map. That way it goes to try and get some scouting done as well. That's going to be important throughout these early stages just to try and make sure that Nice is not doing anything too tricksy. Uh, try and make sure that he's just playing a standard game as you're ready to deal with. Checking forward of the proxies, always a good idea when you don't SCV scout at the start. And Adept into Twilight Council is rather standard. Does start the Stalker next up. There we go, Chrono's that as well. Very solid setup there. And Oliveira with a third CC, dude. That is a wildly greedy maneuver. <laughs> it's it's always, it's just one of these things where it's, it's not a bad way to mix into a series, but we've seen it so much in game one recently of series. And actually, you know why? It's because, it's because I think this is the Protoss map pick, actually. I think that's why he's doing it. I don't think this is a map Oliveira would have picked, so I think he's like, you know, I don't mind doing a strategy which maybe isn't my best, but it's a good surprise build that can do massively well, especially if they go, say, Phoenix, and, uh, and they don't scout the third command center quickly. It can really give you a good bit of economic momentum. That's very true. If you get yourself that uh, triple OCC economy and you don't get punished for it, then it can just give you a lot of, like you say, momentum. And, and that really on the map like this as well, if you can kind of get economic momentum to start dropping with as well and start kind of splitting armies up, that can be where you can really get the cross player to kind of move around a little and uh, cause a bunch of trouble. So we will see what the uh, plan is on Oliveira. Off of this, obviously, currently three racks, so he's going to be into a very biocentric style. For the next stage of it, Orbital Command is coming through. A couple extra Marines are building. That Blink's still halfway done at the moment from Nice with the Robo Facility coming up, and he's yet to drop a third, as the Reaper can see. That Barracks is on the way. Stim starting. Good Deeper raise. I love that building placement. Every game, Oliver, and just never gives it away, right? He always hides his building so well in this matchup. He's going to try and shoo the Adept out as well with a Marine split. Third base starting for Nice here, just after the four minute mark and Marauder production begins as well. I, I, I always worry if, if the Terran can scan like the first Observer, that the Protoss is just so in the dark for so long. Even if that Observer sees the third command center, it takes a long time. But if Oliveira can scan that one down and take it out, this will be an amazing opening for him. The uh, model building, so a little bit of defense there as we do have our factory coming up. So Oliver again, that extra tech for himself as well. Obviously, eventually we'll move away from just the bio into the mm -hmm, bits and pieces that support the bio. The Observer spot the Reaper still on a bit of a move around on the sides. And that Orbs is coming down to the bottom right as the Adept also trying to shade up. But the Depot will raise and that's just going to block off for the moment. Yeah, 
Okay, it goes in, so we actually allow our Reaper to get through, but it doesn't really do too much. I thought he was going to get the probe for a second, but no, it doesn't even get that. That's fine then. Observer now sees it. Third command center, three barracks. This is the moment we get to see Nice's reaction. Robo Bay and two more gateways go down. To be fair, I think he was planning to do that anyway at this stage. We do see a chrono on his probes. Both Nexus get chrono boosted. That's a pretty good call. Wouldn't mind a third chrono even on his uh, third Nexus. He's like, oh gosh, I got to get to 65, 70 probes. And preferably a fourth Nexus as quickly as possible and then be ready because you know the Terran's already at a similar work account to you, which is usually not where you want to be. You'd like a 10 worker lead, at least seven or eight workers as a Protoss in most situations in this matchup. Mm, that's very true. If you can uh, get that worker lead going, then you're going to cover the mule uh, income. But right now, that 3cc has been putting in work and it's now starting to move into position. And I don't really feel like Nice really has too much to show for this himself. He gets in here for a couple of SCVs. Oliveira not expecting to blink into the main. He might be able to cancel home plus of shells. He's going to just blink deeper and go for more SCVs before the eventual recall out. Didn't actually finish any SCVs there. One Stalker just about gets away. Everything obviously gets away, but the One Stalker was very close to going down as Oliveira lands his third during this, transfers some SCVs across. A few SCVs killed helps Nice to kind of get in the right direction with work account. I'm kind of terrified for the army supplies. The fact Oliveira is already up 20 army supply while having had a good income as well, a good economy. Everything is kind of spelling out a Terran advantage at this point in game. Yeah, when you get away with this sneaky 3cc, it does do that. But remember, there is more time for the Protoss to recover on their side. And he's already sent a message, you know? Oh, damaging those two SCVs, letting them live in the main. They're going to be telling their friends, now there's a couple of wounded SCVs with one leg walking around the mineral line. <laughs> Think about how much that hurts morale, you know? Oliveira's units aren't going to be as spicy. And he's only got two medevacs. It's a very basic army. So th th there's advantages. More supply, more stuff, more workers. Oliveira's build is great. But force fields, Colossus, good defensive micro batteries can defend. The problem is if Nice loses this fourth Nexus, he, he's it's a slippery slope. He's got to defend this Nexus. He can't let it get focused. Oh, we're going to see a little bit of a split on this bio force as the Zealots try to move on forward. A couple centuries, the Immortal, the Stalkers, the Colossus all chasing in. The bio is going to go stimming out over to that right hand side. And we just have ourselves the Nexus coming online on the fourth base as well. So we get that up and running. A few probes continuing to mine. Again, Stalker Sentry, Immortal Colossus gathering itself up. The Bioforce of Oliveira is going to be uh, moving out on the left. There was already a force on the top right. So he's already at this point where he's splitting his arm and he's going to be testing and taxing Nice on two different sides. Yeah, the right side looks lovely defended right now. The left side, not so much. However, the OBS gives you the heads up that this will be happening. Ooh, going pretty far to the top right. That's a very slow reaction. His observer saw it, but I guess just having a few Stalker Zealots and a battery overcharge, he's confident. And you know what? Well executed by Nice. See that supply catch up now. There's always scary when the Protoss is building their gateways and their tech. And he's only on six gateways. But I like that choice. Nice has said, dude, do I really want to play mass gateway against the guy on this economy? No. Let's go straight to second Robo. Let's get Disruptors out. I think Nice is actually playing a very well-rounded PVT. And... After seeing him having to look a little bit cheeky and desperate in the previous PVPs, I'm pretty happy about it, man. This is uh, definitely a good turnaround for him, and we've got a proper macro game in our hands for the start of this series. Yeah, we do. I'm, I'm excited about it because th there's definitely a world where Nice comes into this and he does play that more aggressive style. Oliveira plays that super early aggression as well, so we don't necessarily see the, the longer kind of games, but this is, like you say, definitely going to be a bit more macro focused. The Zell getting knocked down there to took out a Marine. Just have the orbs chilling out overhead, keeping an eye on things around the map also. As a plus two attack, plus one armor coming through. The ship weapons is continuing. Our planetary fortress is also on the way from Oliveira. So we keep on bringing that into action as the bio gets there to pick off a zealot. And the watchtower just going to be checked on for a moment. All right, we've got that big army moving out for nice. Lots of zealots. Fifth base coming in. Double forge is upgrading. I, I wonder what flavor of late game we're going to see is it just pure disruptor gateway and rotating around and using your mobility do we see a sky toss transition will there be storm added in those rare immortal transitions that a few protos players favor so far looks like just gateway disruptor is the main focus he's still got his two colossus from the early stages i like that it was only two by the way i think a lot of players overcommit there but nice knew he was behind and that you know these might just get counted by vikings but if you only go two, he builds 10 Vikings. I mean, that's 20 supply of Vikings for 12 supply of Colossus. So it's, it's a pretty good trade, just forcing him to build those Vikings, especially if you send the Colossus back home and just like don't even engage with them. I, I think it's actually way more awkward for the Terran. 
Well, Oliveira is at least going to try and press the issue a bit, coming out to the center. An Observer gets knocked down, so that will fall immediately. The Disruptor, plus two attack and plus one armor, all coming about. Delts will dive, the Marauder's going down. And we have this Bio Army just figuring out where it wants to focus on. We are pretty much maxed out. Still Observer's littered across the map as well. This one here going to get scanned and taken down, so that's a bit less map vision now from Nice to just watch for these future rotations of the Terran Army. He's got to rebuild those. That has to be a priority, but so many Protoss players don't rebuild these observers very quickly, and they're only one supply each. Like, they build so quick. You've got three Robos with a fourth Robo now building. I'd love to see a few observers come out, because otherwise he's mighty blind right now. There we go. An observer does start up. See more. I want to see three or four observers. Uh, mass commands and a transition for Ollie, plus two ship weapons, fusion core, starport coming in. I think that's starport number three as well. So... It feels like Oliveira is very well set up for the late game. And as nice, you need to be pushing. You got to get forward on this map. Like, if you don't start pushing, you just let him get to range lib. It's usually a pretty sad late game for the Protoss. But if you can get out there and start posturing and picking away at things, shooting those disruptors, looking for pickoffs, you can make a play of it right now. Nice is stuck in his corner of the map, not finding a moment to move across. If he doesn't move, then at least start attacking of yourself, right? Like, beyond the disruptors and so yeah. on. It's time to start thinking about Stargates and Stargate units. That's your way of fighting range liberators in a somewhat efficient manner. So you kind of need to do one or the other. Like you say, start pushing now, start getting the Terran while he's setting up, or, yeah, invest in the future. Right now, he's kind of investing in the here and now. An extra Nexus doesn't do too much for you in the long scheme if you're going to just get sieged by libs and you can't ever move around the map. Even nukes coming up from Oliveira. I've seen a true dive to the late game from both these guys. Disruptors. We'll try to initiate here, two disruptor shots again, post massive stim from Oliveira. Nothing connecting, but at least the stim was forced. Gonna drain a little bit of Vendivac energy, if nothing else, and Nice is trying to take a bit of a fight on the left. Well, remember, Oliveira likes to pre-spread and jump on top. You gotta be careful here, Nice. A lot of your shots are still on cooldown. You know that Oliveira likes to do a big pre-spread and then jump on top of those disruptor armies. A couple disruptors go down, but their shots are landing pretty good. Oh, pretty decent disruptor shot so far. A triple Marauder shot there. Massive balls landing for a nice. He doesn't have protection right now. The closer are actually focusing down disruptors. He could try to hit them with a disruptor shot potentially. Cloak Ghost doing a really decent amount of damage, but Oliveira lost that fight rather badly. That being said, he's got mass command center up. Remember, he has much more late game progression. So even though that fight went well for Nice, he needs to like remax and rotate to the to, to the north. Do it again. Pick off commands and his pick off bases. Start blinking on these units and abuse the immobility of the siege focused Terran army. Well, this is going to be one CC again knocked away, but we've got plenty of those. The Liberators continue to try and set up, and again, this is the problem. Even with the supply lead, Nice can't currently break in. If those Liberators stay active, we're just about to get out of range of that nuke, making sure it's not going to be too impactful. The libs are going to reset themselves, and again, for Nice, it is about kind of taking fights in different places. The SCVs will do their best to repair this planetary, and they are doing so. Liberators getting further forward. The planetary does now fall. The SCVs were just gone. Not enough repairs available, but we lost a lot of units in this process, and that is going to free up a, uh, you know, it's a, kind of the Terran play to kind of survive. We've got CCs to replace the bases lost. There's the Fleet Beacon, there's the tech up from Nice as well, so now we're seeing a move into that even later stage of this game. I honestly think he doesn't even need it, to be fair. I actually think you can stay on this star for a long time. I, I think Nice, as long as he takes the corner bases, he can overwhelm. He's trading evenly so far. Disrupt is not being handled very well by Oliveira. The Liberators, though, attacking into the Siege Liberators is always a crazy move. He should be rotating north and looking for those command centers on the right side base. And then as the Libs on Siege, that's when you, you look for kind of the reposition. He enters the Sensor Tower Vision. Oliveira is a little bit slow to on Siege. He does start moving over there now. Leaves two Liberators on that left side. But there's a whole massive pack of Zealots that are going to find those workers. Two Liberators will not defend the Zealot run by on the left side well enough. Oh, I wish he committed in there. I actually think Nice right now can afford to throw some Zealots away as long as he gets economic damage. Mm-hmm. I'm with you, I'm with you. Here's our Liberator Siege up. Couple probes going down. It's going to be one more probe on the left side. Nope, that Liberator just going to stay there and the probe is safe. But either way, it's mining time being the night across the board. And now Oliveira pushing. Uh -oh. If these Libs get in an aggressive position, as, I mean, Nice just has no idea about this. This is terrible. Disruptor did not realize it is going to go down as well. As Oliveira scans around, he sees the army. As we are going to counterattack as Nice, we're going to enter a base trade. Well, we'll oh, see how that can work. Siege every base, but then no, he pulls them back. He F2s them home. It's going to be a full base trade right now. Nice going in. Stalker Disruptor is one of the worst base trade compositions in the game. It's very low damage output. 
It's good at defending. It's not good at killing the buildings. We'll see how much he can get done with that, whereas Bio is fantastic. Um, that being said, the Libs got f 2 home. Then they went back to the front. Now they got pulled home. Now they're going back to the front. Oliveira does see that recall, which is why he's pulling the Libs back here. The Disruptors come out. Their shots whiff. That recall does nothing. And it looks like Oliveira is coming out way on top. The Liberator harassed coming in. Pulled Nice's pressure home. And this is why we were saying Nice needed to get aggressive earlier because the moment you get pulled back and then the bio lib shoves across the map and gets a good position, it's very awkward. You cannot fight into those siege libs with this basic army. You need Storm and Skytoss units to engage the libs head on at that stage. If you're going to play the Gateway Disruptors army, it's all about being on the offense, keeping the Terran pinned, and just finding those little exposed angles where the Liberators aren't sieged up to engage. But Oliveira, a beautiful comeback there after a few nasty engagements. Yeah, really kind of the decisiveness as well. Realized when he wanted to go, realized when he wanted to just commit. And Nice just lost track of that army, decides to go across, which is probably a fine decision. The recall was wild though, right? Like four disruptors and a couple of gateway units. Two disruptors died before they even shoot as well. It's not like he shot them the moment they got recalled. Um, just became very messy for Nice the moment that that attack across the map started, as though he was just struggling to recover from not really realizing what was going down. So... There's going to be Oliveira taking a map one victory. And he's going to be off and away to a 1 0 lead. And uh, we have got ourselves game number two coming up with Oliveira looking to extend on that. Uh, multi time champion of this region obviously is looking to get it done again. This is the upper bracket finals winner of this moves to that grand final with a 1 0 lead. You would be set up brilliantly to have the best possible shot there. You know, it's kind of a, a newbie thing, but I'm just thinking about cannon placement and how, like, when it does get to really late game, I think something that could really help a lot of players out there on the ladder, but actually even in this scenario, it's the rare case where it would actually help nice. Uh, if you've got cannons on those, like the front fifth base or the one in the very top, and you just have three cannons on the very edge of the map, drops and liberators can't get past without dying. So th there's, there's maps where the edge of the map is right next to it. There's no dead space, and this is one of them. And if you have cannons there, on the left side, it's a bit harder on that map, but on the right side, you definitely can. Uh, or the top side, I should say, on Goldenora. Yeah, those libs, at least one of those libs comes in and gets shot down, um, if not if not both of them. But it's just, it's crazy that that Nice was in control and looking really good, and then he's like, oh, there's a lib here, oh, there's a lib there, and I'm making a Sky Toss transition. Started building a Void Ray to one side, sending his army to the other side. And as he's cleaning those Liberators up, bam, you know, Ollie's just in great position destroying him. So you gotta be careful getting your whole army pulled back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you got to be uh, the, the positional power in the you know this matchup is is so high. You got to be really on top of it. And if you're getting controlled in terms of being moved around, then that actually ends up pretty rough for you as well. So a lot of things to consider here as we get ready yeah. for round number two. It's Crimson Court. This is honestly Liberator Heaven as well. Very narrow map. If you get to that point where you're building libs, you're going to be able to get a lot of them, and I think you're going to have a very good time of it. So. We'll see if we are able to set up into that style as we head in game right now. We'll be starting off in the upper right-hand corner with the Blue Protoss player down a game in the best of five. Nice. And his opponent looking pretty fantastic in that last game. Had a rare moment in the mid-game uh, where he was weak, but his macro was fantastic in the bottom left. It's Oliveira. One, one fight where the Disruptors did really well versus him, basically. And his army was getting chipped away at. But uh, other than that, very well done. And I love that mass command center transition. Just very well prepared for every stage of the match. I wonder if this is like a, like you said, it's very narrow up the middle. Great for liberators. I wonder if it, it becomes like a very popular just tank push map. I don't know. I, I think if you expand behind the gold, just in a straight line as the Protoss, it's not necessarily too scary. It's just if you take those front bases, you're exposed. Now, this does look like a very early proxy second gate. Oh my, is, do you think this is a second gate here? Because that's such an early pylon, it kind of looks like it. That's an old school build. We haven't seen this in a long time. Yeah, second gate gets proxied and then you can put a lot of pressure on from it. it would, I mean, it makes sense. There's nothing else you can build right now unless you're just building this pylon here for some fun, which is not usually the case. So two gate it is, and that's going to be nice applying a lot of pressure early once you get to the front. I feel like this really died off because the Cyclone is so good at shutting down that early gateway unit pressure. I guess we're kind of living in a world where early Cyclone pressure is, or early Cyclone is not as much of a guarantee from Terrans anymore, but it's still fairly common. Uh, Oliveira not scouting, so he will not be able to pick up on the later Nexus to maybe figure out what this is. So that's a good win for Nice already. 
I think his Reaper usually checks in this position when he when he doesn't know SCV scout build. So I still think there's a decent shot that Reaper goes in that direction. Uh, even pre-cycling, I feel like these builds fell out of favor, you know, because it, it determines just got so good at defending everything just with the Marine, SCV pool, really good micro, just on the fly, fantastic mechanics, but not scouting, not knowing about it. Stalker from that side, Adept from home. It's a classic build. It's very committed. This expansion is super late here. Nice has even gone second gas. So he, he's really very committed. The Zealot does get intercepted by the Reaper, but that doesn't necessarily tip off Oliveira. Stalker comes in. Another Stalker does start up behind it, but it's supply blocked. He forgot his pylon. Oh, that's so unfortunate. He's got to stop the bunker going up. That's the most important part, but he actually goes for the Marine. And I guess fair enough. If there's nothing to get inside the bunker, it doesn't really matter if it finishes, right? Yeah, but this Reaper will be get, able to get inside, so that's at least one unit here, and now the Zealot and the Stalker got to decide what they want to do. We're talking to find the Stalker. The Stalker is pretty low, as we are going to be able to finish the Command Center as well, right? So that's not going to be too much of a problem. Stalker does live, running away. We get full surround on this Adept with the damage of the SCVs. The Adept is going to get very low and just shades out alive. This Reaper says, no, 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 I want it. And oh, he's going to go for the Stalker as well. He's going to get no both way. units with the Reaper. Dude, he's got a skull painted on each of those KD-8 uh, pistols. Actually, that's the <laughs> grenade. Uh, P-45 Gauss pistols. I remember the name. Law nerd in the house. Uh, Marines coming out. Stalker Zealot's still going to cause some havoc, but good micro so far. And as that Cyclone pops out, that's the end of this. Yeah, this is pretty much it. Just completely done. The Cyclone is such a huge defensive point of this build. And now, well, nice is building a one base twilight council so he's going to continue to send the aggression he turns around for a marine kill he loses another adept here stalkers can do okay against the cyclone but it's going to be a little bit of back and forth and this is realistically the cyclone just has to raid for its lock on to be available turn around get locked on once more that's going to be a lot of what that cyclone is aiming to do one base blink all in man four gate blink crazy build order but there is no scout until that Reaper gets in. And that Reaper's about to get in, man. This is so unfortunate for Nice. It's had a lot of opening potential, but good micro on that Reaper. And this Reaper is the MVP. Sees the Twilight, upgrading, sees no Nexus. And Oliveira is, is now in an unstoppable position. There's just no way this works. It's even 5-gate on one base. That is insane. Um, yeah, you just have to keep your tanks alive and be super safe. Very conservative siege tank positioning. Keep all the Marines going, non-stop building army. And uh, this should be very hard to break. Maybe Nice can just blink in, kill the tank, get up the ramp, blink on the second tank and do it. But he realizes not, it's been scouted, probably not gonna work. Starts an Nexus, starts charge in a Templar Archives. This is a terrible spot to be in as the Protoss. Yeah, this is really just terrible, I mean. Everything about this kind of sucks right now. Missile turret coming up for safety. We got our Temple Archives coming through instead of the Nice. But, I mean, you're, you're just on such a late expansion. The Robo is even going to drop down too. Any sort of succinct attack from Oliveira is going to be really dangerous for the Pros to deal with. And even with Charge, I mean, he doesn't have the economy to really kind of make Charge worthwhile here. Because Charge almost always works because the Zealots are going to be in very good numbers. And early on, they can kind of swarm a little bit. But how do you do that off of what has been a delayed natural? I just don't see where the gateway count comes from, so... Feels very bad for Nice. I mean, I understand he's got to try and do something. Storm is going to have to be an absolute godsend for him, because he is in a ton of trouble. Yeah, weaponized bath tech right now. We know that Terran <laughs> are often dirty boys. They don't like to get in the bath, but... Nice needs to bring out that, that, that mother of nine children energy and just be like, Get in the bath! scrub behind your ears you know he, he's got to get the storm of all storms he needs to basically catch Oliveira moving out with his marines super clumped up land one or two storms in the middle charge on top with the the three zealots that he's going to be able to afford off this and then you know try to make some magic happen um i do think there's a slight misordering from nice that a lot of protoss players make so a hot tip for anyone out there i actually think you should always warp in at least two high templar before starting storm because you're going to see Storm's done. And I know it's a long upgrade, but High Templar Energy gathers so slowly. So right now he's like got Storm finishing, but he's only got one Storm and he's just warped in a second High Templar. And that's that's kind of the problem is you really need to start banking that energy early. Otherwise, you don't get any of it uh, built up. Bit of a supply block for Nice here as well, unfortunately. That that earlier supply block delaying his uh, second Stalker from the front was also kind of tragic. Ah, Stalker gets punched down by those Siege Tanks on the front as well. 
as it goes across the map, we do have the plus one attack and combat shield coming through from Oliveira's. We just get more and more powerful. And, well, again, I mean, I guess with what plus one combat shield, medivacs popping, there won't really be any reason for Oliveira not to move across to the other side, so that should be the moment where we see if Nice will defend or not. As this is really just extra gates coming online. Nice still two bases. Oliveira's building a 3cc and his extra wrecks. I mean, again, all the investment just to make sure he maintains any kind of elite he's already created, which is obviously a huge one. Oliveira looking pretty across the board. That observer is going to be crucial. If you can see the move out and land the right storms at the right time when Oliveira is not expecting it, and that is his ticket back into this game. But he's trying to do it in isolation. Oh, I don't like this move. No, gives it away, and that's unfortunate because now he's given away the surprise. And even if he landed a good storm, he had nothing to finish off the army. So I always feel like you need to be like, you can do that with a disruptor, but doing it with storm doesn't make as much sense because it's just rare you actually get killing blows with storm unless your opponent's not watching at all. Yeah, maybe if they're like completely AFK and those units just sit there and stand in it, but you're right, that, that is obviously an extremely rare situation. Oliver just sets the drop off to the right hand side. He's on his way to the Ghost Academy again, playing honestly just very safely across the board. That's a good storm drop, 10 SCVs, but that's also some much needed storm energy, so that's less energy to actually deal with a bigger push. And uh, as mentioned, we are going to have the units moving at the right hand side. I think the probe might have just glimpsed that. Not sure if Nice obviously paid enough attention to notice those units are moving up there. He's not got anything in position just yet, and it's going to be a long walk around for these units, which have to go all the way to the top and then through that gold mineral choke. That is absolutely a cancelled third base. Oh, Prism died. Oh, oh, wait, no, it survived. Oh, it it must have recalled. Oof. Yep, it did recall. Okay. Looks like a widow mine hit it and it recalled. I thought it was dead for a second as well there. I had to bring up that uh that shift L <laughs> quickly to check. Stalkers are gonna get back here. He's slowing down the push, but man, that is a small group of Protoss units, and they are facing an army right now. The Persian horde is here, man, and the uh Leonidas and his crew. I mean, they do they do a lot of CrossFit. They've got awesome abs and spears and stuff, but this is going to be really hard. There's enough arrows to blot out the sun. There absolutely is. The T-Tank spread is already looking pretty darn good as well. As we continue to move up this side, Robo Facility is taking a few shots. Super Battery Active going to heal stuff up, but we are out of EMPs. Uh, sorry, uh, out of storms pretty much because we EMP'd a bunch of those High Templar. Ooh. Those are the only two storms available. We will just charge through for the rest, and that is going to be GG as Oliveira is going to net himself a 2-0 lead at the start of this upper bracket final. Clever opening by Nice. I actually really like the opening, just didn't quite come together. And as I said, really, it was mostly defended even before the Cyclone came out, right? So the Cyclone was the finishing blow, but Terrans have just got so good at that reactive micro, the SCVs, the Marine, the Reaper, and just kind of handling that pressure. So I uh, hats off to Oliveira for defending it. Uh, nice tried to make a comeback with the storm drop. That was always going to be the long shot of all long shots, and uh, does end up losing that game down zero two. Is this where Oliveira starts to establish himself, Wardy, and say, "No, no, no, I'm still here. I'm still the best in the region." It, it looks way less shaky so far than the Swiss stage. Oh no, he's he's definitely stepped it up in playoffs. I mean, he was a lot more comfortable even against Lemon yesterday, right? Than he was in the Swiss stage as well. So he has definitely been kind of bringing it back to the level we expect of Oliveira. The only reason we questioned it is because, like we say in the Swiss stage, it was a little bit shaky, it was a little bit less than expected, but at this point, I mean, he's, he's shown us that, that those concerns are aside. This is not uh, group stage Oliveira anymore, this is playoff stage Oliveira. And he is a map away from a grand final. Once again in his Asia region, a region which obviously we know he has had a big say in over the last few years, and, uh, well... Obviously, Asia's not always been a thing, but when it was just China as well, obviously, he was a big mainstay here as well. So, Oliveira doing what Oliveira does best back on track, and uh, let's see a map away from a 3-0 and just playing some very solid games as our players are ready. So, we can officially begin into Oceanborn for game three, and Oliveira looking for the sweep. I think Oliveira's going to open really aggressive this game. I think he's up 2-0, he can afford to take some chances, and uh, it's a, just a, it's always a good thing to mix in. You, you know, he's played very defensive, very kind of safe, so far, uh, this is kind of what I remember Oliveira doing a lot, maybe two, three years ago. And uh, at the time I was like, oh, he's got to stop playing so predictably defensive. You know, we should mix it up. You know, these guys are going to find counters to this stuff. But I think when you when you do a mix between the two styles, it's always uh, just super ideal. And look at that, already 
gonna just go for a standard opening so okay no no proxy i was hoping for a proxy here anyways down here in the bottom right side up to zero let's see if you can get the clean sweep it's Oliveira. top left our blue protoss nice trying to bring it back looking to begin the reverse right now it's a tall ask but hey nice he's uh you know what he's experienced he's won regionals in the past so don't uh, don't completely count him out. He's he's the underdog right now, and the series scoreline has shown it. But I mean, I, honestly, I wouldn't have predicted an Oliveira 3-0. I would have expected Nice to take a map. So I'm still believing at least for one map here with the Protoss. Yeah, Nice has got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. He does force the barracks to get placed out of position with this early probe for us. So the reason for the probe is not just to force the barracks. Obviously, it's to scout and check you're not getting proxied. That there's no all-ins. But it just has the added benefit if you send it this early they don't get to build the barracks in the wall off because your probes they're blocking and just is very annoying using these shields which regen out of combat so notice you lose these shields disengages those shields start regenerating after what is it like seven seconds out of combat i think and you can see that blue bar refilling and just as it gets to max he'll start fighting again and this also has the added benefit of getting a bunch of the scvs deep in the orange so if you do get an adept or an oracle into the base later on there's just a bunch of targets that are much easier to finish off. So it's a really nice little bit of harassment just to do as standard as a Protoss player in this matchup. If you're going to send an early probe, why not send it even earlier? One of your very first at the start of the game and uh, really annoy your opponent. It really tilts me, man. I hate the probe nibble in my SCVs. It's the absolute pet peeve of Starcraft if I have one. <laughs> That's not fair. You're such a Terran player, man. Terran players are always <laughs> the funniest with this. They're like, I refuse to pull an SCV to just chase. I'm like, just pull an SCV to chase it. But but I, I do the same thing where I'm like, my build order, I need every mineral. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. the probe's leaving. I'll put it back to mine. And then I look back and it's just turned around instantly and come back in and killed the, the SCV on the barracks. And I'm like, ah, I should have just left the second SCV chasing it. Why am I so dumb? It's uh, it's our folly, man. It's built into our Terran DNA. And I like, I just need to accept, not, I'm just not good enough. Like, just leave the SCV chase and the probe, it's okay. <laughs> the 20 minerals aren't going to matter in my build orders. So, uh... Yeah, that's the thing we forget, right? This is why I try to watch Dark's games. I'm like, how is this man a world champion while getting supply blocked every six seconds? Like, and I'm like, ah, strategy actually matters a lot. Even though this is an execution-based game, it's sometimes just choose to go the double macro hatch and assume you're going to miss injects, you know? Like, Dark's so good at, at, at kind of preparing for, like, the weird inefficiencies, and I love it. Anyway, this is the same build from game one. I don't know. I didn't really... I felt like Nice, once he scouted it, reacted fantastically and was in a pretty good position. Um, Not necessarily the worst strategy. I think it's, it's very surprising. What I like about it is I don't, on paper, think it's optimal for this map or, in general, for his strengths against Nice weaknesses. But, therefore, it's highly unpredictable. If Nice is really understanding his opponent, why would he expect this same build to come out again? So it's kind of clever. Oh, I, I, I'm with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, just going to mix it up a little bit. That charge now starting, and we have ourselves a couple gateways and the robo coming through. So Nice getting set. We do have Oliver with his barracks all up, and the hallucination will confirm everything in the main base. So Nice knows exactly what he's up against, and ooh, we're going to go Glaives. Because he maybe realizes there's an opportunity to kill because oh. of the greed. Yeah, cancelled charge. It made glaives. Wow, okay. Haven't seen that in a little while. It's pretty much only the Taiwanese guys who do this first turn anymore. Uh, big old glaive adept timing. So he opened up, uh, yeah, three gate charge. And uh, he's now changed to glaives and extra gateways. Ooh, wee, that's six gate glaives. Looks like he wants to drop a third Nexus as well. So it's not all in, but it is going to be heavily committed. And I, I honestly feel like the Nexus is basically a fake, right? It's literally like, hey, they usually come and scout for this with like a Hellion or an SCV or something. You almost want to let that Marine walk past your base. Like you want to pretend you didn't see it and let it just go. But obviously yeah. that would be too <laughs> suspect. So he can't, he can't do anything that tricky. Once the Marine attacks you, you kind of have to have to kill it. Well, the gates all coming up. We have a bunker. That's a nice start. But honestly, this is the sort of scenario where you need to know what's up because you would really love to have that Sim City available. A dark shrine behind it. So if you cause enough chaos with the adepts, but you don't quite end the game, the DTs have a high likelihood of getting in there and causing trouble, especially if the Terran's trying to re uh, you know, recover and they're going to drop down a whole bunch of mules and everything. So starting to see a little bit of that coming in here. And we do have our Resonant Glaive's about to finish. Dark shrine is coming through. The extra gateways are building up. 
We just have the, well, a couple extra barracks building from Oliveira as well. So all of that coming through, but this is all about this warping right now. Whether Oliveira can find a defense, he will have the bio upgrade. So he will have stimming combat shields. That helps. And he actually knocks this obs down as well. A little win for him right now too. But again, he needs to be ready to deal with these adepts and they are going to hit hard. Yeah, Stimming Shields is huge. No Metavax. And remember, Bio gunned down Adepts really fast, but Marines disappear. Watch the Adepts. If they're hitting the Marines, they will kill them very fast. Marines going to see it coming. The Marine sees it coming. There's a Prism going to the high ground. Shade coming in as well. Does he cancel it? Oh, oh my god, he commits. Oh, oh, oh what? my goodness. This is okay. This was oh, not it. He loses the Prism. Oliveira with a clutch snipe on the Prism. The SCV is tanking there. These Adepts are going to do a bit of damage. They've killed 14 workers, but they get annihilated. Only four Adepts getting out. And definitely, I'm not quite sure what was going on with that shade onto the ramp, plus dropping sentries on the high ground. Maybe he was planning to just focus the depot and open up that path into the main base. Yeah, that was... The, so I think what happens was obviously the... Uh... I think Nice was just caught off guard by the fact that there was Bio in the main, and he kind of panicked because the force field was kind of a panic field as well. And all of a yeah. sudden, he's he's just too busy trying to panic with the prism that he misses the cancel on the shade or whatever the plan was there, uh, and then it all just goes wrong. So, yeah, pretty uh, pretty rough time as the Bio gathers up on this natural, and we're going to start trying to get that wall off in place, which is what you want. You do not want to let these adepts get on top of your units. Uh, and Oliver, obviously, a head on army supply right now is looking good. The Dark Shrine is up, the first DT is out, but we are yet to see that hit as it's in the prism, so we'll see if that can make something happen here shortly. This is looking really bad for Nice. The Dark Templar is one saving grace, but only one. If you could get DTs in both bases at once, it'd be a different story. Turret building in the main base. It's an anti-prism turret, though. He was not expecting a DT follow-up. Oh, the prism getting very low. Barely gets out of there. Does save it. Baits a scan. Not too bad of a start. Nice doesn't have any splash damage behind this yet, though, remember. So he's still committed. He's going for a zealot charge and plus one attack. Nice is still stuck on a very low tier setup, and he needs to find more damage. Every bio unit that joins the game right now is just a massive step towards winning for Oliveira because the more bio there is, the more you overwhelm that no splash army. I actually do see the Metavax load up there, but the Adepts do not recognize they don't have the vision to see that this is a missing group of units, so he is not going to commit in. Oliveira lands the third. Most importantly, I think Ghost Academy coming up. You take the shields off Adepts and Zealots, all the tankiness of that is gone, and you are just going to see them have a terrible time. So yeah, Oliveira getting huge tech up. That's a big pylon placement right there. A little bit of a heads up about this drop in, but there's not much mobility. So that does mean that you're still going to struggle jumping between bases here. It's not like you can kind of go and, you know, blink after any of these units as the DT does go down. You're going to have to just run units from the third to the main, run them back to the third, or just split your units apart. And that's something you don't necessarily have enough for right now. We recall into the main base. Uh, this is this is rough. Okay, the slow zealot adept is there to defend Wardy. I think he's going to be fine in the main for now. <laughs> but <laughs> definitely an awkward position. That is for sure, Nice has uh, really gone for broke in this game and not found the mark. And it is going to be a lovely drop harassment. Picking off Adepts, feedbacks go down. They don't really do that much. The buyer just stands and fights and wins the fight. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. That's a, that's a feels bad, man. You know, you just lost yourself an Archon, a bunch of units, a pylon. Storm is on the way, but it just ain't ready yet. So that's not something that can help. There's a few Stalkers, and they shoot down the Medivac that's low. Again, remember that they are pretty low mobility because they do not have Blink yet. Uh, that Prism is heading back, does not get to see those Medivacs, so they will go unseen, continuing across to the other side. And again, Oliveira just trying to pick his opponent apart, realizing that this army is very vulnerable to just drop and mobility play. As the Medivacs boost into the natural expansion, and he actually has the Templar Archives here. He's not going to be able to kill it before Storm finishes, but he is going to stop any more High Templar from morphing in, which is a big deal when you just forced another Archon to come about. Those Medivacs went down, that wasn't the prettiest. We're going to kill the Prism, however, and you also have EMPs available with Ghosts in this army. Uh, I'm just going to drop the low ground, there's a free base to kill. Yeah, losing the drops on the top was, was a bit nasty, but Oliveira is just doing so well right now. It really feels like... Uh... It's it's a tough spot to be in. I mean, it's it's beyond tough. Nice is in just an awkward spot. He still has, I was gonna say no splash damage, but he has one high Templar with Storm, and he's not even rebuilding the Templar archives because he's like, well, there's so many ghosts out. Like, <laughs> it's not even ideal. I guess I just spend my gas on second Robo and Robo Bay instead while trying to take the fourth. But Oliveira is miles ahead in this series, and 
feels like nice just couldn't really get any damage done you know he's doing a lot of these builds that had a lot of success in 2017 to 2021 maybe 2020 they haven't really worked that well since then the, the terrans are just so solid at defending these adept timings i mean we did see a few adept timings work like uh maybe a year year and a half ago in this matchup but the like the proxy second gate and stuff like that we haven't seen work in such a long time and it was all close to working but just not quite there and Oliveira's, of course preparation has been exceptional well now he's got the big army on the top as he prepares to send himself through the emps are gonna really just take away pretty much any chance that this army has there's just no way we even snipe a few units just for style points at the very end GG and Oliveira is going to advance on through 3-0 to zero into the Grand Finals of the Asia region. So congrats to him.